Hey guys, um, so today I wanted to talk about uh, opportunities, failures, um, fear, and uh, what we can do, how to you know get the best out of life, I guess, um, and not be controlled by regret or fear of um, you know not taking those chances or the things that um, maybe have happened in the past and we're afraid of things repeating themselves, I guess. Um, so I'll start out with a, uh, an example. Okay, so um, there was a time, I know, it's crazy, would you believe, that I was afraid to approach people, like when it comes to asking them out or um, letting them know I liked them, you know, <laughs> all of those crazy things. Um, so yeah, I was very afraid that I would be rejected, that people would say, oh, you know, you're not pretty. Um, I was always the the overweight girl, so I was always, you know, the fat friend or, or whatever. So people would approach, but they would want, want to talk to one of my other friends. Even, um, you know, friends who, who maybe were bigger girls as well, they had more confidence in me. You know, there were different um, reasons why I wasn't the chosen one. <laughs> um, and I came to a point where I thought to myself, hmm, if I don't approach this person, if I don't say, hey, you know, um, do you want to hang out sometime? Do you want my number? Do you, you know, uh, and this is just in dating, but in life as well, it, it works. Um, you know, if I don't do these things, what am I going to be thinking? Because I'd end up wondering, oh, I wonder if that guy would have liked me. I wonder if we would have dated. I wonder if my life would have been changed if I had have taken a stance and said, you're worth asking that person. And what's the worst that could happen? These random people, it's usually the reason we want to ask them um, for their number or give them ours. It's because we're probably never going to see them again. Um... So, I mean, the fact that we don't go and do that uh, it just tells us, well, we're not willing to take any positive risks in our life. I mean, the fact that um, they might say no, um, okay, cool, <laughs> what, what's going to happen? Are you going to, you know, drop dead? No. Are you, are you going to um, be embarrassed for the rest of your days? No. You know, and so I, I would say things like, I would walk up and I'd say, you know what, can I have your number? And nine out of 10, the guy is taken, right? So he'll say, I'm with someone. And you know what I say? All the good ones are taken, you know? <laughs> and that makes them feel great. They're like, oh, my wife is gonna love this story. And I'm like, yeah, it's cool. I get it, you know? Um, if If, you know, if I was your wife, I, I'd be wrapped to have you too. You know, so I make it like about them. I don't go, oh, you know, you've really upset me now and, and that kind of thing. Because it's really tough to say I'm in a relationship when someone approaches you to start with. Um, you know, someone as amazing as me. <laughs> I'm, jo I'm joking, I'm joking, clearly. Um, but someone in general approaches you it's it's tough to say i'm in a relationship there are so many people out there who are being unfaithful and who are even lying to the people that they're maybe cheating on with um so i really appreciate when people are honest with me so i always try to you know appreciate the fact that they were honest and also that they're just a decent person someone who's loyal to their partner is decent and there's obviously a reason that i wanted to connect with them um so that's that's a start right um so okay back to what i was originally saying <laughs> um so i met this guy on a bus he's a bus driver um he was really funny and really cool and um i do this thing where i i check the boxes you know i see what kind of values these people have by when i meet people and um, so I was just kind of asking him different questions and he seemed like a good dad and, um, you know, he wasn't with the partner anymore. Um, and so I was just asking these different questions and I thought to myself, I'm going to ask him for his number. I'm going to do it. So I got off the bus at the train station and I said, Hey, can I have your number? And he said, I'm in a relationship. And I thought, 
<sighs> I know, you know, of course you are. Of course, he's a nice guy, you know? So I said, of course you are. And he said, yeah, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And I was like, it's all right, no worries. Thanks for letting me know, you know? And I was fine with it. And I got off the, the bus and um, he was kind of happy and I was happy and I thought to myself, wow, it's taken a while for me to get here. You know, when I first started putting myself out there um, in dating, in life, in general, I was petrified. I was run by fear. I was run by what if, you know, something terrible happens um, and the regret was so terrible after when I didn't take those choices because I talked myself out of it. I said, no, it's going to be terrible. They're going to say no. They're going to embarrass you. They're going to, you know what? If somebody says no and they go out of their way to embarrass you, you don't want them in your life. You know, like, you do not want that person in your life. You don't want that job. You know, you don't want that because we all deserve a decent people in our lives. We all deserve a decent opportunity that presents itself. And a decent opportunity that presents itself um, gives you those two options. You can chase it and either get um, turned down um, and, and take it as a lesson to kind of learn and keep going. Or you can get turned down or um, told no or whichever the opportunity is and um, succeed, you know, you can succeed. So you can either get no or you can succeed. Um, that's 50-50. If the lottery was 50-50, we'd all play, wouldn't we? Because we know there's a reward at the end. So if we know there's a reward at the end, why aren't we playing? Why aren't we playing when it comes to life? We're, we're focused on the negative, on the possibility that something bad could happen, you know? And, so, and I walked away and because I've had experience at hearing no, at hearing I'm taken, at hearing, you know, um, that's not going to happen. I was okay with it. I was fine with it. You know, I was like, okay, cool. No worries. Um, there's plenty more people out there who are interested in giving me their time. And not to say that he wasn't a great guy. Wasn't on him, you know. He was being great to the person he already has. Um, so I look at that as an example to use in your life, right? Do you want that job? Do you want that new career change? What do you want to change? Are you looking at these opportunities and focusing on the regret for the times you didn't take those opportunities or the fear that maybe you're going to take that opportunity and it's going to fail? <laughs> and you know what? Failures are amazing, fail hard. This is what I keep looking at and I keep reading. Fail hard. The harder you fail, the the quicker you can learn that that is not what you want. <laughs> because when we play it really easy, when we play life on the fence, we don't learn about what we really want. You know, when, when you're sitting there and you can't decide what restaurant you want and you say to your partner or whoever, I'm really not sure where I want to go and they go, come on, choose and you have this, you know, disagreement for ages and you, you just don't know where you want to eat. And then that person says, all right, then we're going to that pizza place. And you go, no, I don't want pizza, anything else but pizza. All of a sudden, you know, you don't want pizza. Before, you couldn't say, I don't want pizza. You were like, I don't know what I want because you were focusing on everything. <laughs> so you've got to simplify it when you're looking at your life. Simplify what's worked. What are the patterns here? What's worked for me? What doesn't work for me? Get out what doesn't work. That's gone. That's past. We don't want to focus on that anymore. Unless somebody comes around that you meet or that job or whatever it is that you find. And it reminds you of something that didn't work. <laughs> That's always a good one to look at and go, oh, that's triggering something here for me. Is that a big barrier? Like, is that one of my limits? Um, or is that just something little? Like, oh yeah, someone said this to me once, like, um, I don't like when you do that. And that triggered when an ex-partner said, I don't like when you do that, you know, and it became a huge fight or something like that. So, you know, that's a little thing, but you've got differences with like controlling behavior or, um, 
maybe a boss who is going to uh, use you for your time and not pay you properly, you know, um, those kinds of things. So it's really important to just open up your life.